Hello there, and you join me out and about today on a day this, or a morning that's just beautiful. It's so still and frozen, and I'm in this fantastic landscape with this sort of frozen pond, and it's just looking so beautiful. I've got a shot set up already, which I'll tell you about in a minute, but I think it's going to be a really great day. Before we get into it today though, this video is sponsored by the LoopTech CT. It's the brand new device from LoopTech that you can use to just enhance and drive forward your photo, video and audio editing. It's an all-round device for an all-round creator just like me and I'll talk about that a little bit later on because right now I'm just very excited to get on with this shoot in this just absolutely beautiful location. So I'm set up for my first shot of the day and I just have this fantastic scene behind me. I'm focusing mostly on that tree, uh, that big tree just behind me there. That's the main focal point of this image. However, I have a lot more going on. I've got this frozen pond with just catching the color that's in the sky at the moment with these interesting clouds, just reflecting that back at me with the beautiful detail of that ice. Talking of ice as well, I then have these reeds in the foreground and they've just got, let me just take this twig here, just this beautiful bit of ice frozen to it on this really cold but really still morning and it's just making for just a fantastic scene that I'm really really excited about. It's not particularly complicated, it's quite, it's quite a flat landscape but with those trees to give it some elevation I think it's going to be something really quite nice and hopefully worthy of a print a bit later down the line. I have the camera fairly low down at the moment because the tree's quite tall and I want to get some of these reeds in so I've had to lower my perspective so I can then angle up a bit more to get some of the reeds and then all that tree which is actually quite tall. I want to get the whole thing in. We're just a little way before sunrise still but because it's quite a clear day over that way where the sun is rising there's actually some really beautiful light and it's actually already quite bright particularly because everything's quite white with that ice it's reflecting a lot of light around and it's just actually a fantastic light so with the camera down low i've got some of the reeds that you can see in the foreground here i'm going on the vert on a horizontal at the moment i may try it on the vertical as well i'm cutting this bush out just here the one there and then I'm trying to keep the trees to the right hand side of the main tree out as much as possible. I think it's working quite nicely for a composition. It's all about that ice actually. If it wasn't for that I don't think this would be particularly interesting or, or it would have actually have a very different tonal type colour. But it just has that wintry feel to the morning even though we're still in the autumn. And I'm liking it a lot. So settings wise I am bracketing just to be safe. I don't really need to, because uh, I think I'm exposed pretty perfectly actually at f11, one fourth of a second, or one quarter of a second, and ISO 100. I'm focusing on that main tree. That's gonna give me the composition that I want pretty much. I'm on the two second timer. I'm ready to shoot. There's a bit of color, a bit of pink in the sky, which I think is gonna make it really nice. Yeah, I mean, it's just popped up already. It isn't the sort of image that has that instant wow factor, like a mountainous scene would. But it's the kind of scene that if you look at it for an amount of time, you study it when you're looking at the photograph. There's lots of detail and interest in there. And shape, and I've got that tree right on the rule of thirds, which I think works really well for the composition the sort of top edge of it almost at the top sort of fifth portion of it is right on the rule of thirds cross mark as well so yeah just really nice it's going to be i'm happy with that image i'll show you that in a second but i think once the sun comes up as well and catches some of this ice with that beautiful golden light it could be quite incredible so i'm going to go for a little explore around now and try and find something that's gonna suit the sunlight when that comes up. <laughs> what a fantastic morning, so still, not a breath of wind. I love mornings like this. They are absolutely perfect for photography, even though it's quite clear 
It means that the time we have available to do photography with the best light and best conditions is brief because this ice will melt away pretty quickly as well. <sighs> this is why I do it though, it's absolutely, absolutely fantastic. The ice has melted just so quickly. So what I've done is taken the perch on this log to do a little bit of wildlife photography because there are some animals coming out to get something to eat on this beautiful morning. I've got this 400 mil lens on there. Problem is with wildlife photography is that I don't have that much patience to sit around and wait for the animals to come. That's particularly true with little birds. They are hyper aware of your presence. So you've got to sit for a while before they come to you. I have been thinking a lot recently about, does the photograph actually matter? Does it matter if we get a good shot? Now for me on these vlogs, it always has mattered and it puts me under a lot of pressure. And I used to do that before I started making vlogs as well, is I was desperate to get a good shot, especially if I went on a trip. Understandable, of course, but over the last couple of weeks when I've really been suffering with my back, this last week I have been just laid out flat the whole time, sitting down has been virtually impossible, so I've not had a chance to do any work. It just has made me really appreciate what landscape photography is all about. And it's the experience. It's about going out, enjoying nature as leaves are falling down all around me from this tree. I don't think the picture matters, really. And that's particularly true as we start to think about some of the environmental issues that we're now faced with as well. Getting out and enjoying nature and all it has to offer, like this beautiful morning that we have today, is absolutely what it's all about. Do we need to get great pictures every time? No, we don't. Someone commented the other day on one of my videos that I'd taken my best shot in a while. And I don't really see it like that. I just think that I'm going out and taking my photographs. Some people will like them, some people won't. And I don't think it, in the long run it really matters. Because if you go out regularly enough and enjoy the landscape enough and take enough photographs, then at the end of 12 months, and we're coming up to December now, where we all start to sort of reassess things, you'll find that through your backlog of pictures from that year, if you end up with 12 good ones, just good ones, they don't have, even have to be great, but if you end up with 12 good ones, then you've done, it's been a really great year, landscape photography wise. But if you focus on that small moment, you're hypercritical of each individual trip, you're hard on yourself, then you're sort of holding yourself back to just going out and finding new, new locations, exploring areas like this. I just feel very appreciative today to be able to do this in this environment, which is fantastically beautiful. And I'm feeling grateful to be able to get out as I've had a dark couple of months with my back. It's hampered plans that I was wanting to do, which included a trip to Scotland. And I'm not making a massive amount of money doing this as well, so it puts pressure on the family and stuff as well. So yeah, difficult. But with the sun on my back today, in this environment, it feels good. So I think what we'll do is have a little, little look at this edit because I think it could be a really interesting one actually and to do that we're going to have a little look it's not a review but we're going to have a little look at the Loop Deck CT because I think if you're an all-round creator like me you're going to be very very interested in it. Now I'm back in the office and it was just great to be out this morning I couldn't stay out for too much longer because of my back but I have got one image that I'm happy with and I always find that coming back and then doing the post-processing it's such a satisfying part of that landscape photography process where you're bringing something back home and you can continue to be productive and creative in the editing studio. Now, for this edit, I've got a really nice picture that I think you'll get a lot out of the edit. And I'm going to use this, it's the Loop Deck CT and that's the sponsor of today's video. I've been working with Loop Deck for a while. I have done a couple of tutorials with them on how to use this with Lightroom Classic and with Photoshop, so you can head over to their website to see those videos if you want to. But I'm gonna give you a quick overview of it as we go through this 
edit. So let's just hit on the Lightroom button here. The Loop Deck CT is basically made up of a few different kind of controls. You've got the, the buttons here, the, the wheels, and then the touch screen, and you can customize it pretty much in any way you want. The circular buttons here are organized as basically as workspaces. So for example, we're in workspace number one at the moment on Lightroom, which is our library panel. So I can do pretty much everything now without touching the mouse and keyboard. I might need to do a little bit of brushing with the mouse, but uh, I'm in the library module here, so I can just use the scroll wheel here to select the images. And the images of the image I'm going to edit is number 21. So I'm just gonna hit a flag on that just to know, just so we know that's the one I want to edit. So I can then go into workspace two, which is essentially our develop module. And that is the image I'm going to look at. Raw file at the moment, we're gonna enhance it, but I think overall, I'm not particularly happy with the balance of the image because I think there's just, <clears throat> particularly over this side, there's just not much going on over there. And then I don't like this tree that was creeping in. I just couldn't keep that out. So I think what I was, or what I decided I was gonna do was uh, crop it into a square crop. So I'm just gonna select the crop tool to bring that up, nudge it over that way a bit, and then I can hit apply changes on the loop deck. Let me just straighten that upper touch as well. I can just rotate it on the wheel here and then apply the changes. So let's first concentrate on that sky because I want to bring that back. Right, one of the occasions I will need the mouse is to draw in my gradient. So bring it to somewhere around there and then I can come back to the loop deck and use that there. So I can use this to do the exposure, go down probably about two stops, something like that looks good. And I'm gonna come down on the highlights as well, just a touch. And then I'm gonna bring the shadows up as well, just so I'm not affecting that tree too much. And I'm gonna use the range mask tool as well, just like that, that looks okay. Right, that's a nice balance of exposure now across the, uh, across the frame. So I'm gonna apply those changes. Now on the loop deck, you have your all your normal controls. So there's only six knobs as opposed to the loop deck plus, which has all your photo controls. The loop deck plus is probably the better option if you're just doing photographs. But if you're an all round creator like me and you're doing photo and video, this is the device for you because it's just so versatile. You can customize it in any way you want. Okay, let's go up on the contrast touch. If we then look at the histogram up here, you can see that I'm missing quite a bit out on the whites and the blacks. So I'm just gonna swipe down to bring up the next set of controls and go up on the whites and then come back down on the blacks. I'm gonna add in a little bit of magenta, just very subtly though. And then swipe again and just cool it off a touch because I want it to have that really icy, cool feel to it come down a little bit more to about there. That looks good. Now let's control a little bit of the color across this scene and using the HSL panel, and that can be done in the loop deck as well. So I'm just gonna click three on the workspace that moves us in to the color workspace. And I have them down the side here so I can affect the hue, saturation and luminance of each color. And I just swipe down to bring up the different colors. Really nice. So I'm gonna start with the oranges and bring the hue down on there swipe down and do the same with the yellow. And then I want to adjust the saturation of the orange as well. I'm not quite happy with the blues though. I think that sky is just a little bit too blue. So let's come down to the blue colors. There we go. And let's have a look at bringing that blue saturation down. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's not bad, but I just think I'm gonna bring the luminance up a bit. So let's just draw that luminance up a bit. It maintains that quite nice tone but just softens it off a little bit. This area here, when I experienced this, it had quite a bit of color in it and I'm losing that at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is use a radial filter. So if we come back to the develop uh, workspace and hit on the radial filter, then need to use the mouse to draw that in again. And I'm just gonna draw it across this section here like that. And then I'm gonna use the range mask again. So I'm only affecting those sort of more highlighted colors and I'm not affecting the tree and these bushes too much. And I want to click on invert. So I'm affecting the things inside of that radial filter and then bring that exposure down a touch like that, which is looking pretty nice. Highlights down as well like that. 
Yeah, that's see the colour starting to come out of that. That's looking nice now. Add in a bit of saturation on there as well, just very subtly. Let's just come back to the develop module and I can hit on the touch wheel here to bring that up full screen. I think that looks really, really nice actually. I'm really happy with that. Possibly worth a print and it's just really nice to edit with this loop deck. What I love about this as well is its ability to edit video as well because everything's so customizable. Let's go over to Adobe Premiere. So I've got workspace number one for all our editing and I've customized this wheel to be able to just scroll through the timeline, which is just really nice. It's really accurate and just makes all the difference being able to control that needle with this loop deck. And then I've got all the other touch controls. Uh, it's just so versatile, so many things I can do. And it's just speeded up my video editing particularly. And it's working really nicely for my photo editing as well. If you'd like I say, if you're just doing photos, I think the Loop Deck Plus is probably the better option for you and it's cheaper. So that's the Loop Deck CT. I'll put a link down below for you to check that out. But if you're an all-round creator like me, and you're doing video and photo, it just fits into your workflow so well. Uh, and I feel like it's made me more efficient and it, I'm just enjoying doing those things more. It feels more natural, instinctive, and I just love using it. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that. Been a difficult few weeks for me getting out and about. I want to get out on more adventures. Uh, but my body is stopping me at the moment. But next week, I hopefully will be putting a review out of the camera that I filmed today's video on. So I'm excited about that. Uh, and I'll see you again very, very soon. I'm Adam. This is First Man Photography. Out.